So, Ruben, first of all, it's great to see you here. Um, and I just want to say, um, as a pastor, um, that I'm sorry for the hurt and hate that you've experienced, particularly from Christian community, um, particularly recently. <laughs> You're a comedian. You tell jokes. Um, <laughs> I guess my question, though, is um, what impact do you believe your joke on the project did have? And do you believe that telling that joke by a straight person would have had the same result? Mm. Just mm. before you answer that, I reckon context matters. Because, sure. we're, yeah, just before we get you to your You don't want to tell the joke again, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no. Mm. This isn't bulletproof. No, but I do, in all seriousness, I do think people may have missed it and not right. know what we're talking about. And I think people should have the right to know what we're talk okay. talking about. Earlier in the year, you shared a joke on the project. It was very controversial. A lot of people were offended by it. And you said, I love Jesus. I love any man who can get nailed for three days straight and come back for more. That was the joke. <laughs> there was more in the delivery, but, yeah, it was... <laughs> As an ABC presenter that would like to stay being employed, I <laughs> did that with a very straight, um, straight delivery. And I understand why people were offended. The question, mm. though, mm. right, obviously Christians were offended, and, and that's certainly their, their right to express that. Mm -hmm. but, but on the question of whether a straight person had made the joke, you would have gotten a different reaction. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, I know it's that... That joke has been told by straight people. Ricky Gervais devotes almost 90% of his routine to tearing down religion. Dave Chappelle does it. Large, big name, straight comics do this all the time. This isn't about the joke. This is about who was telling it. This is about a queer person. <laughs> this is about a queer person not wanting to be the butt of the joke, but making the joke and having a voice. Not being the political football, but commenting on the game. And when that happens, they want us to become invisible. And we don't do that, because if we are not visibly queer, then the most vulnerable in society never become mm. visible. They disappear. And we lose you or lose too many of your children to crap like this. Um, Bridget, I'll bring you in. Uh, now, no one, no one is challenging. People have the right to respond however they like to these things. And if people are offended, mm. they're offended. But there is a question, though, around freedom of speech, humour, the way that we express ourselves. Where is that line? Oh. Oh. I know. <laughs> Just an easy yeah, one for you, yeah, Bridget. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go to okay. Section 18. Let's see. But... Um... You know, I, I am a person of faith, and it wasn't just the Christian community um, that got offended. The Islamic community did as well. Um, although, I guess... Christians have been persecuted for uh, over 2,000 years. <laughs> no, give it a break. <laughs> I'm just standing next to a Jewish homosexual and you're going to say Christians have been persecuted? Well, well, well they I'll have. Let, I'll let Bridget finish Go on, if that's let you OK. Come, I'm sorry. Thank, thank you. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, it comes with the territory at the end of the day. Um, I don't... I think I would have been equally offended uh, had anyone said that joke. Mm. So, and that's... I'm only speaking for myself and my faith, but that's me. But would you have filled my DMs with death threats? Because that's what this particular question no, is sort I've of about. No, I've had death threats too. Absolutely. I every um, everyone on this panel has had death threats into their... I feel left out. I've had no death threats, so... <laughs> <laughs> I think that... I mean, tomorrow. I think we could probably go toe-to-toe -to -toe on negative social oh, media go. intake. Let's go uh, for it. But, yeah, I, you know, and I don't think no. anybody should get death threats for no. what they say, right? But no. I also think that we live in a pluralist society um, where one of our great strengths, one of the great multicultural countries in the world that has remained relatively peaceful uh, around religious, um, you know, antagonism. And so I'm probably... I wouldn't be going near those jokes. But, I mean, you're a comedian, you're an artist, so you're going to do what you're going to do. But... Yeah. There's something, to be, there's something to be said for what, the context that this joke existed in as well. And I mm. deliberately said on the project that this joke is a direct response to me receiving hate from Christian people from a very um, innocuous interview I did with children for Channel 4 in the UK that resulted in me being called a groomer and me having my DMs filled with, you have to accept Jesus' love, you'll burn in hell, all of the different tropes. Since the project... Uh, I can't even begin to count the amount of articles that have been written about me 
uh, calling me lewd, demanding for apologies. My phone has been confiscated and combed over by three different state police organisations. Uh, my parents have been instructed to not open anything that comes addressed to me. My addresses and their addresses are on priority response lists and have been scrubbed from the electoral roll, so they can't be found. Uh, as I said, in Sydney, there were mobs wanting to lynch me. So I think there are comedians telling far worse jokes who receive far less. I don't think this is about one joke. It was a great joke. Thank you. <laughs>